Okay, so this is a little chart I did up on the levels which cause harm. So let's look at the levels of harm. Radio frequency levels, microwatts per meter squared is the unit I'm going to keep to. So level of 3 causes sperm damage, 30 behavioural effects in kids, 2,000 leukaemia in kids, a level of 5,000 is just a 3G phone, one foot from your body. So that would be like on speaker, you're getting a level of 5,000. So compare that to if it were in your pocket, you know, you'd be getting a... Um, 5,000 and 3 causes sperm damage, fertility problems. 100,000 microwatts per meter squared would be if it's an inch from your head and nobody holds it an inch from your head but funnily enough that's where the, the testing was done for the safety limits is out here, not here, where everybody holds it. Um, and then the safety limits, the official safety limits by ICNRP and Comreg and the FCC is 10 million which seems ridiculous considering these are the small levels that cause biological effects. So then you find out that actually the safety levels have nothing to do with biological effects, they're to do with heating. This is how long it would take or how many units it would take to overheat you. And that's the big problem in the science. You've got over 200 top EMF scientists and 4,000 general scientists, 8,000 engineers, Screaming, hopping, pulling their hair out, saying, for God's sake, get decent safety levels that account for biological harm, because we are biological beings. We're not really worried about getting overheated from the laptop or whatever. I mean, yeah, it does get hot, but we're not really worried about heating as a priority if level of three is causing fertility. 30, behavioural effects. Insane. So where did these levels come from? They come from the Bioinitiative Report. Now the Bioinitiative Report is the sciences, scientists, all the research. See this 1997, 1992, it goes all the way up to 2019. This is where all the, the science is logged, all the research. So very, very low levels, and unfortunately I've cut it off a little bit. But very, very low levels down here will cause all sorts of effects that you're going to be very familiar with. So, these are the super low levels. We can't even measure them on our little meters, but um, base stations. Base stations are masts, okay? So, very, very low levels, basically picowatts is what you're into there. Um, something we can begin to measure now. Now, they're talking microwatts per centimeter squared. We convert that to meter squared. Multiply by 10 to the 4. So you're going to get, say this here, 0 0.0128. That's 128 microwatts per meter squared. If you have a trifield, or you'll see my measurements later on, you'll understand what this is. Now, what's here is cut off a little bit, but levels of between 6 to 128 will cause fatigue, depressive tendency, a lot of that around, sleeping disorders, concentration difficulties, cardiovascular problems. We knew that in 2004, okay, and that's a very, very low level compared to what's out there at the moment. And um, that was, the, you know, base station, masts, 2G phones, very low level, causes stuff that's in our society. Nearly everyone has that. A level of 200 in children, short-term exposure caused headache, irritation, concentration difficulties in school. A short-term exposure. Well, they're getting exposed to more than 200 microwatts per meter squared and for more than a short term in their schools now with Wi-Fi. It's literally very, very powerful. I've just shown them, uh, in another video a reading of 9,000 in the school, inside the school, and 20,000 in the playground. So short term, it could be a half hour out in the playground in 20,000. A level of 500 microwatts per meter squared, again, 8 to 17, which is, you know, they're getting exposed to that, you know, from, from zero at the moment. Um, so this level of 500, again, conduct problems in school, which is a huge issue. A level of 50, which is extremely low comparatively these days, uh, sleep disturbance in adults, you know. And it says in this case, this particular study in 2010, that it was some, not others, which we know. It's, it's not everybody that will get every symptom. 
This is a level of 400 microwatts per meter squared. Short term exposure, headaches, concentration difficulties. So these are what we're seeing. Here we go, base station, that's a um, mast at a level of 100 microwatts per meter squared. Um, hormone problems even after 1.5 years because sometimes it takes six years it depends on the dose, the dose response how long you're exposed to a base station the base station it can be really low but it's just constant it never switches off, you never get a break in bed or anything like that with your phone you can turn it off so this is the bioinitiative report the bioinitiative.org you'll find all these charts and you'll be able to scoot through and take a look at all the different symptoms and the different levels are pretty low um, see it's not just 5G it was 3G, 2G masts were always an issue sperm problems, fertility problems huge issue Wi-Fi routers will do this as well you feel stupefied, zoned out so now you're going to hear a lot of people like I did listening to Martin Kenny at the Love Leitrim uh, hustings say oh the studies are divided no that's the industry line and that's what they used to say for the tobacco studies and the asbestos studies and glyphosate roundup studies that's the industry spin oh they're divided we can't make a decision so take a look at this April 19 2019 update this is Professor Henry Lai at the University of Washington radio frequency radiation free radical oxidative effects now free radicals and oxidative stress are at the basis of all chronic illness including cancer and 90% of the studies showed an effect of radio frequency radiation and only 10% didn't so if they're divided well it's 90 to 10 in favor of you know, serious harmful effects so how dare any government minister or any political party come out with spin in this day and age and slap a big mast on your doorstep or sell you a gigabit society totally data driven wireless when this is 90% guaranteed harm and it's known that for a lot of years this is just an example of a study BM, BMJ British Medical Journal 2013. Just some of the some of the symptoms we've just been looking at. That this is an unusual one: lack of appetite, lack of concentration. We're used to irritability, very used to trouble sleeping, very used to. Of course, trouble sleeping leads to a lot of other problems like melatonin and cancer as well. So here we go. This is very interesting. I mean, it looks dead boring, but no, this is a game changer because instead of just saying, oh. The research has to prove it and even though the 90% of the studies all saying the same thing that there's harm we have another approach now there are fantastic labs available so people with EHS electro hypersensitivity these are the people who have the symptoms like at one point I did if I put a phone up to my head when I was really ill it went pure red and painful I could not use that phone it's a 2G phone and then multiple chemical sensitivity both of them very often go together. I do have multiple chemical sensitivity. All those Lenores and fragrances are noxious, but they use the same biochemistry pathway in the body. And now you can do tests to show that. You're no longer poo pooed as it's all in your head. No, you can prove it. And there's all these little stars here. Each one of those is a test. And your doctors should be running those tests. And if you want to get them privately, uh, at a lab like Genova Diagnostics you can do that too and basically any council that slaps a mast on your doorstep needs to shell out now the thousands it will cost to pay for these tests for every single individual and it has to be done uh, regularly because that's going to monitor your health okay histamine in the blood of patients um, nitrotyrosine a marker of peroxynitrite and opening up the blood-brain barrier. See, these are the things that happen when you're getting exposure to the radiation that powers all your wireless devices, all your smart, not so smart devices are doing all these things. This is biological harm that can now be measured. Um, instead of saying, oh, get the scientists to do a $30 million, 30-year research. No, 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 get a test. Get this result immediately. It'll show your oxidative stress. It'll show your mitochondrial function. 
This is uh, not guesswork anymore, guys. So circulating autoantibodies auto can show you even have an, immune, an autoimmune disorder. Um, and this is what this EMF does to people. You know, oxidative stress, inflammation, all of these markers, biomarkers. This is what we're looking at, reliable disease biomarkers, characterizing and identifying electrohypersensitivity and multiple chemical sensitivity. No more guesswork and no more excuses from government. You want to know what a safe level is now when it comes to your tri-field or your, any other meter that you have? Safe levels of radiation exposure. There are none. There are no safe levels of wireless radiation. That's Dr. Neil Cherry. He was one of the most um, the biggest scientists. He died of motor neuron disease from exposure to wireless radiation, electromagnetic radiation. So the EU Parliament, their best compromise was 100. That's their, that's their top top level. Outdoors, safe level is 100 microwatts per meter squared. And in your sleep area, less than 10. And if you've got EHS, so you're sensitive, then it's less than 1 microwatt per meter squared. Now I'm measuring masts, um, 5G masts, and people whose bedrooms are right beside those masts are getting readings of 8,000. And they're saying it should be under 10. The bioinitiative report now are a little bit stricter and they're going to say the safe levels between three and six and that's compromise of course they don't want any but three and six three of course we've already seen a sperm damage so nature you see you have to move the decimal place nine places to the right that would be their natural exposure to radiation if there was no masks and no wireless and it's almost zero like you know that's non-natural non-native radiation for the for the um, the data because you're getting movies you're getting videos you're getting text and anybody who looks up at the sun and say oh it's all the same radiation no it's not when's the last time you downloaded a 4k movie from the sun ah, and don't hold your breath so the german building biologist extreme concern at over a thousand you're going to see from the readings we're taking all over sligo leitrim was common that you'll be lucky if you get under a thousand. So, now here is um, an official source. This is an Australian mast, okay? Now you can get these readings from masts in all different countries, and different locations will have different power. So, this particular one, the green is the 3G, and the purple here is the proposed 5G. So, this one was happen to be extremely high because 0 to 50 meters their 3 and 4G mass was already at 30 milliwatts per meter squared so that's 30,000 microwatts per meter squared and we're, we're sort of keeping to the one measurement of microwatts per meter squared um, so that's 30,000 then you go out 100 meters 28,000 you go out 200 to 200 meters you 152,000 it's big 200 to 300 meters away from the mast, you were still getting hitting the 150,000, and at the 400, 300 to 480, 80, 82, like our trifold. I happen to be using a trifold. Some people have different meters, um, but it, it maxes out at 20,000. So these are like it was just a maxed out, and you wouldn't have known it was 30 or 82 or at the 500 meter mark 46. You wouldn't have known it was 150. But anyway, that was their 3G and 4G. They're allowed to go that high, but we've just seen in the research that you're getting a level of 3 of sperm damage, you know, level of 30 behavioural effects in kids, 2,000 leukaemia. So here we go now, 5G, what's the difference? 5G mast, well, their 30,000 is now going to be 300,000. They've multiplied it to 10, within 50 metres of the mast. And they're putting these masts within 5 metres of people's bedrooms. So they're sleeping now in 300,000. Unless, of course, they object and stop this. And that's what this is all about. Stop it. So, as you can see, every value is hugely increased. Hugely increased. Every single one. Some of it quite shocking. So, if you had a choice, would you bathe yourself in any of that radiation? Knowing an informed choice. You'd say no pretty much why we're not informed about anything. If the government says that an acceptable level of radiation is fine, 
an acceptable level of Roundup in your food of pesticide is fine. They should give us a choice because I say, no, it's not fine. And you might too. So here we go now. Um, this is a study. This is Leonard Hardell. He's a surgical oncologist, University of Erebro, uh, Sweden, University Hospital. And um, now that he's retired this coming year, he's in a research institute for all of this. Um, this was 10 years ago. They called out for urgent, urgent studies on people living beside masts because they were finding that 8 out of 10 studies reported increased prevalence of adverse neurobehavioral symptoms or cancer in populations living at distances 500 meters from base stations, masts. So 10 years ago, 2010, they called for urgent studies in all of this and none of that's happened because in the last 10 years they've just increased the number of masts and they cannot increase them and increase safety at the same time. Sadly, this shows a correlation between base stations and deaths. And I think if people want their base stations, um, let them choose to live beside them, but don't force people to live beside them. And don't bring in a situation like they are doing now with 5G of blanket radiation, small cells every 100 metres, because the harm never went away. Right, there's 40 appeals by doctors and scientists since 1998 to stop the rollouts of these things, but they keep increasing. This here is another Dr. Russell Cooper. He just shows here that as the microwatts per meter squared increase, see if you're under 10, under 100, under 1,000, over 1,000, see the incidence for cancer starts going up. But the studies, if you look at them closely, you'll get cancer at the very low levels too, um, within a three kilometre radius. It's not just 500 metres. Constitution. I'll blow the dust off this, bring it out, get the government to sit down because they may get a shock when they see it. But we've actually got personal rights. You know, the state guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as practicable by its laws to defend and vindicate the personal rights of a citizen. While we do not consent to 5G, eight county councils so far, when I did my leaflets, were, had stopped it. Um, they had voted to stop it. But they've been steamrolled, and there's more councils coming on board, still being steamrolled. And Owen Murphy's trying to rush through legislation to stop us protesting. There's people all over the world protesting. The top scientists in the world are saying, stop this. Okay, it's, it's industry versus people here, and our government, unfortunately, are siding with industry. And if the people vote them back in, well, you can't blame the government. So number two, the state shall, in particular by its laws, protect as best it may from unjust attack, and in the case of injustice done, vindicate the life, person, good name, property rights of every citizen. Well, in a 5G Internet of Things and a 2G, 3G, 4G, there's no protection from attack because I've shown you a video where Roscommon County Council got a man to tell you that the 700 megahertz ubiquitous broadband for 5G is going to penetrate your skin 1.5 centimeters day and night, and the small cells are going to have a different level of radiation that you'll absorb in your skin and eyes. That's attack. It's unjust attack. We do not consent. I don't want it. And the ill people, people with pacemakers, weakened immune systems, people who have been fighting an illness, they're going to feel it a lot worse. Number three, the state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as practicable by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. Well, phones, ADHD, miscarriage. It's not something you normally hear in one breath, but it's time you did. Look at the Baby Safe Project Yale, and you'll see that the uh, research and the experience of people is that if you use a phone, a tablet, 
any sort of Wi-Fi near your abdomen when you're pregnant, there's a very big chance your child will have ADHD or, or autism because if the man is carrying a phone in his pocket, he could be potentially getting sperm damage at the genetic level. And a lot of people are getting miscarriages they don't realize it's to do with the Wi-Fi or their devices. It's this radiation. The dwelling of every citizen is inviolable and shall not be forcibly entered save in accordance with law. Hmm. Well, I suppose they're making a law for everything now, aren't they? So they're going to just beam in this radiation. Your neighbour can put a router at the other side of your bedroom wall, right beside your head. And a lot of people have been injured that way. Or they can put a smart meter the other side. And a lot of people have been injured that way. You could be sitting in your sitting room, your living room, a bus goes by, you're getting radiated, a car goes by, a neighbour's router goes on, um, or a mast just happens to be serving the area behind your house and it's beaming right through you and you're sitting in 20,000 or 300,000 microwatts per metre squared. And then they're selling, uh, every item is going to have a microchip that's also radiating um, microwave radiation, post-modulated microwave radiation. So it's um, it's violated. And five, no citizen shall be deprived of his personal liberty save in accordance with the law. Well, we've had Con Colbert lead a delegation of 20 people on masts in 2006. They had been deprived of their personal liberty because of the mass, because the mass made them ill since 1990. That's 30 years deprived of personal liberty. And they described one after the other how bad their quality of life was. And here we are now, 13 years, 14 years later, rolling out 5G. Where are these people going to go? And all the other people like them. And all the other people that will become sensitive. Because that's what the, the science says, the more exposure you get from these extremely high levels that are now coming in, as well as the low levels that were always there, um, the more exposure you get, the more sensitive you get. I'm sensitive. Nobody asks me. I don't want it. Where do I go? In a smart city. A smart village. You can't even go to the forest without Wi-Fi for you. You can't go to town. There's no white zones. People with pacemakers are at risk. There is supposed to be 2016 legislation that businesses are supposed to assess their workers. That's not happening. And number six, the education of public opinion being, however, a matter of such grave importance to the common good. The education of public opinion is information war. Google, wiki, or media censored, promoting industry agendas, like we're some sort of expo, an expo tent, and the people are just to be sold to shame on the Irish government. Success.